everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Today I would like to show you how to get dressed in the 1830s like this. I've also included a hairstyle tutorial. It's a super super quick hairstyle. It's this one right here and it's a hairstyle that's ideally meant to be worn underneath a hat, cap, or bonnet uh, just because it's not quite as finished and done and decorated as it would be if it were to be worn on its own. So it's a very, very quick hairstyle, very easy. All you need is a couple of hair pieces and some bobby pins and you'll be all set. And getting dressed in the 1830s is actually quite easy as well. Now a slight caveat to this, uh, if you have a back closing dress that hooks up the back like I do, you probably will not be able to fully get dressed in the 1830s if you are by yourself like I am. Uh, if you saw my last video, I uh, wore this also for my last video and just like last time, I am not fully hooked up the back because I'm by myself. So uh, hopefully you have someone with you if you're getting dressed in the 1830s, but then again, you don't have anywhere to go right now anyway. Of course, if you're watching this video in the future, then grab a friend and have them do up your closures in the back. Uh, but otherwise, if you're just getting dressed to hang out around your house right now, you're going to be fine. So come along with me and we'll get dressed up just like this. Always remember, shoes before corset. These are the Claudia shoes that were by Christian Siriano for Payless that came out a few years ago. I added ribbons to them that are just hot glued within the shoe. I am already wearing chemise and drawers at this point, so the next step is the corset. I made this corset several years ago from the pattern in period costume for stage and screen. I wear this same corset with all of my Regency outfits because corsets did not change very much between the 1820s and 1830s. I am able to get into this fully on my own even though there is no front busk to help me like in Victorian corsets. Now for the hair. The first step is to find your center part. My hair really does not like to part right down the center, particularly because of my widow's peak. So my center part is not perfect, but it works anyway. You only need to center part the front part of your head because the back is going to be parted in a Y part. So you're going to separate the hair that goes over your ears and temple into a different section than the back part of your hair. Once you have completed your Y part, you are going to take the back section of your hair and put it up as if you were going to put it into a high ponytail, but you're going to wrap the ends into a small, tight, coiled ballerina bun. Pin this bun into place with a couple of bobby pins. Since my hair is fine, it only required two to hold it in place. This hair is really acting almost like a large pin curl. Now we're going to work with the front sections of the hair. Take the top area of the front section and separate it out from the bottom area. With the bottom area, you're going to take a good chunk of it and use that to make a pin curl. You may not have to do this if your hair is thick and tends to keep bobby pins in place anyway, but since I have fine hair and I find that hair pieces and such just slide down my hair when I wear them, I always make a pin curl to secure hair pieces to my head. Now we're going to take one of our hair pieces, which is a short curly hair piece. This was actually one larger Irish dancing style hair piece that I cut into half so that I could have one half on either side. You want to take the nicely finished half and make sure that that is up because that way the curls will hang nicely. Make sure the top area of your hair that is still loose is out of the way and find where you would like your hair piece to sit over your pin curl. Then pin this hair piece in place. Try to hide your front bobby pin underneath the curls as you put it in so that you don't see the pin. The back bobby pin can go on top because we're going to be wearing a hat or a cap. We're not gonna see that area anyway. 
You can use as many bobby pins as you like, but I secured this with only two bobby pins. Now we're going to take a bit of my favorite pomade, Lay Right Pomade, and take a tiny bit in between our fingers and rub it together and just nicely smooth it over those very front sections of your hair that are still loose. Then pull that front section back and over the top of your curls. By doing this, you are basically hiding the top part of where the curls are meeting your head and hiding that join in the hairpiece. Secure this with at least one pin and take the very end of your tail from the front and wrap it around your bun. In hindsight, I found that I didn't really need this lower section of hair, but my original intention was to make sure that the front of the hairpiece was hidden, and so to bring it around the front, the bottom, and then incorporate it into the bun as well. Next, we're going to do the same exact thing with the other side of the head, separating out that front top section, creating a pin curl in order to secure the hairpiece to our head, wrapping that top section over the top of the hairpiece, and wrapping that front bottom section around the front and around the bottom of the hairpiece, just like we did on the first side. And that's it for the front curls. Now we're going to take our third and last hairpiece, which is a yaki style braid. Do braid it first, then you're going to loop it around and tuck the ends in and pin it into place. You want to kind of create a little bit of a dome in the center so that that dome can fit over the top of the little bun that you have made in the back of your head and this will fit nicely over it and make it look like you have copious amounts of hair. Now, of course, if you do have copious amounts of hair, instead of making that little bun like I did, you can just braid your own hair and wrap it around and not use this third hair piece. I would still recommend using the curly hair pieces just because that makes your life so much easier, but you may be able to omit this third step if you do have long, thick hair. If you are using this hair piece, once you have fitted over your little bun of your own hair, use nice long wig pins to secure this bun into your bun. I recommend using four of these, one on each side. You're just going to grab a little bit of hair with the pin and then slide it under your bun, your bun again acting like a large pin curl to hold this hair piece in place. The main reason for wanting this large hairpiece, considering we are going to be covering it with a hat, bonnet, or cap, is to secure the hat, bonnet, or cap to your head, because you're able to secure your hat pins right into this bun. Now, of course, it's hard to get that part straight and hard to notice that I had a rubber band sticking out of the back of my bun when I'm doing all of this using the camera as a mirror. But oh well, it will be covered with a hat anyway, and this is a nice, easy 1830s hairstyle. Now let's finish getting dressed. First up, we have our corded petticoat. This should be starched, which mine has not been in some time, because that will really help to hold your skirts out nice and full. All of my skirts and petticoats close with skirt hooks and bars. The next layer is a ruffled petticoat. This again should be starched, and this ruffled petticoat is very, very handy because you can wear it for really any time from the 1830s through the 1860s just by placing it over a hoop skirt or crinoline cage. In fact, my petticoat has two sets of hooks and bars because my 1860s corset has significantly more waist reduction than this Regency slash 1830s corset does. Don't forget to floof your petticoats! Next up, we're ready for the dress. Now, I have already gone and stuck my sleeve supports inside my dress. 
You can see here that they're already in place. I have just safety pinned them into place, but really they would have been tied into place. But they create that nice poof in the sleeve. Of course, the funny thing about putting on an 1830s dress is that you do kind of look like you're being eaten by giant sleeves, but it's all par for the course. I generally put my arms all the way through the sleeves first so that I can make sure to guide the dress over my hair without it messing up my hair. Now comes the hard, or I guess really impossible part, doing up the back. On my own, I can do up the top hook and the waist hook. I could probably do up the next hook next to those two, but since I didn't want to deal with struggling to get out of it, I decided to just do the top and the waist. Where's my lady's maid when I need one? And that's the dress. Now we're ready to accessorize. First up is the belt. This belt is made from a piece of black velvet ribbon, and because my waist is pointed in front, I have shaped small pleats into the belt where it overlaps in front so that it can also follow that point. I pin the belt into place with a straight pin. Now we must take the all-important cat break because Dora has just come into the room meowing her head off and needs attention. Hi, Dora! All right, back to accessories. Next up is the collar. This collar is made of cotton organdy, which has been edged with lace. In my research, I found no evidence of closures on any collars from the 1830s, so I have opted to pin this closed with straight pins. That said, it's difficult and annoying, and I need to be very close up to a mirror to do so, or the camera in this case. So I think I am actually going to put a button and a loop at the top of the collar because it's just very annoying and slightly dangerous to do this with a straight pin, and far too easy to stab myself in the neck with a pin. Also, once again, the camera has failed me as a mirror, so this is a little funky looking. Then I put another straight pin at the bottom, and I go from underneath so that the pin does not show at all. And that's the collar on. As usual, 1830s sleeves are dangerous, and it's very easy to walk into things. So do be careful as you move about the room. We are ready for the piece de resistance, the hat. I patterned this hat myself based off of several different fashion plates where you see a hat that is kind of bonnet-like, but really it's still a hat. And this hat is secured with a couple of hat pins that go nicely through the crown of the hat and into that large bun that we placed at the top of our head. And that's it. Of course, this hat is so large that I now no longer fit in the frame at all. So excuse me while I duck and show you my entire outfit. Ta-da! And that is how you get dressed in the 1830s without a lady's maid. Thank you for joining me on this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did like it, please go ahead and click the thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a video. I post videos on YouTube about once a week, but in between, I also post every day on Instagram. So please go ahead and follow me at Lady Rebecca Fashions on Instagram. I'll leave a link in the description box below. And uh, thank you so much for joining me on this one again, and I'll see you next time. Happy sewing!